Nora Kay as Juliet, Hugh Lang as Romeo. Briarly Lee as Juliet, Stephen Joyce as Romeo. John McCollum as Mercutio. This is camera three. All the arts have a common basis in some form of human experience, whether it's war or religious ecstasy or love. And they stimulate and inspire each other. When William Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet, he gave the theme of tragic love its highest expression in dramatic form. Its impact on other artists, as well as on general audiences and readers, has never lessened during succeeding centuries. To mention just two examples, that one 16th century play inspired the 19th century Hector Berlioz to compose a dramatic symphony and the 20th century Antony Tudor to create a ballet, both on the theme of Romeo and Juliet. And each of those works expresses eloquently the theme in its own way. Each exists as an independent work of art. And so today on camera three, to capture, if we can, the essence of Romeo and Juliet, we're calling on three muses drama, music, dance, not to compare them, but to illustrate their range and vitality even in the presence of each other. Our first spokesmen are Shakespeare and Berlioz. Our mood ranges widely from the high-humored fancy of Mercutio's speech on Mab, the queen of dreams, to the tenderness of first love. <laughs> Found'st thou out this place? My love, who first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel, and I lent him eyes. I am no pilot, but wert thou as far as that vast shore washed with the farthest sea, I would adventure for such merchandise. Mm -hmm. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face, 
Else would a maiden blush bepaint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Fain would I dwell on form. Fain, fain deny what I have spoke. But farewell compliment. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. Yet if thou swearest, thou mayest prove false. At lovers' perjuries, they say Jove laughs. O oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Lady, by yonder blessed moon I swear, the tips with silver all these fruit oh, trees. swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon which monthly changes in her circled orb. Lest that thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by then? Well, do not swear at all. Or, if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry. And I'll believe thee. With my heart's dear well, love do not could... swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy of this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden. Too like the lightning which doth cease to be ere one can say it lightens. Oh, sweet adieu. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night. Good night. As sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that within my breast. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet I would it were to give again. Wilt thou withdraw it for what purpose, love? But to be frank and give it thee again. And yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have. For both are infinite. I hear some noise within. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honorable, thy purpose marriage. Send word to me tomorrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee. Where and what time thou wilt perform the rite. And all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay. And follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. But if thou meanst not well, I do beseech thee to cease thy suit and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive, my soul. A thousand times good night. A thousand times the worse to want thy light. Romeo. My dear. At what o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? At the hour of nine. I will not fail. This Twenty years till then. I have forgot why I did call thee. Let me stand here till I remember it. I should forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy company. And I'll still stay to have thee still forget. Forgetting any other home but this. It's almost morning. I would have thee gone, and yet no farther than a wanton's bird who lets it hop a little from her hand, like a poor prisoner in his twisted jives, and with a silk thread plucks it back again, so loving, jealous of its liberty. I would I were thy bird. Sweet, so would I. And yet I should kill thee with much cherishing. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night. Till it be morrow. Sleep dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Would I were sleep and peace so sweet to rest. <laughs>
Je parie que la reine m'a pour la visiter. Ma, ma, la messagère fluette et légère. La messagère fluette et légère. Tu l'as dit. Une coque de bois. Une coque de bois. Que l'écureuil façonné. Les doigts de l'araignée ont filé ses armoires. Tu l'as dit. Tu l'as dit. La fée a ce page galope tout le monde dans le cerveau d'un page. Qui rêve bien que tout, où mon sirène d'enclair de lune sous la douleur. En poursuivant sa promenade, la petite reine s'abat sur le col bronzé d'un soldat. Il rêve canonade et vive estocade, le tambour, la trompette. Il s'éveille et d'aventure et prie en jurant toujours. Puis se rendant et ronfle avec ses camarades. C'est ma, c'est ma qui faisait tout sa bacchanale. C'est ma, c'est ma qui faisait tout sa bacchanale. C'est elle encore qui dans un rêve pille la jeune fille et la ramène au bal. Le cochon de la joue brille, Mab, je suis comme un éclair dans l'air. In his Romeo and Juliet, Berlioz experimented with a new form. He combined the techniques of opera and symphony, utilizing the device of the narrative aria as well as dramatic scene. His purpose largely was to recreate in music the moods of Shakespeare's play, not the action. And as you listen to the music, you realize he succeeded. The music is complete without reference to the play. It stands alone. In Antony Tudor's ballet, the approach is different. Here, the moods, the specific emotions, stem and express themselves in terms of the action. The very details of plot are the material from which the dance is formed. And so in this approach, the story is retold so clearly that the dancers can pick up the thread of action from the words of the actors, carry it on, complete it. This we shall see. The story is familiar. The experience will be new. Mm. 
gallop apace, you fiery-footed steeds, towards Phoebus' lodging. Oh, such a wagoner as Phaeton would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy close curtain, love performing night, that runaway's eyes may wink, and Romeo leap to these arms, and talked of and unseen. Lovers can see to do their amorous rites by their own beauties. For if love be blind, it best agrees with night. Come, civil knight, thou sober-suited matron all in black, and learn me how to lose a winning match played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. Would my unmanned blood baiting in my cheeks with thy black mantle, till strange love grown bold, Think true love acted simple modesty. Come, night, come, Romeo. Come, thou day and night. For thou wilt lie upon the wings of night whiter than new snow upon a raven's back. Come, gentle night, come, loving black browed night. Give me my Romeo. And when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars. And he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I have bought the mansion of a love, but not possessed it. And though I am sold, not yet enjoyed. So tedious is this day, as is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes, but may not wear them.
How oft when men are at the point of death have they been merry, which their keepers call a lightning before death. Oh, how may I call this a lightning? My love, my wife, death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy cheeks and in thy lips, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous, and that the lean, abhorred monster puts thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that I will stay with thee. And never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here, here will I remain, with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I take up my everlasting rest, and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-wearied flesh. Eyes, look your last. Arms. Take your last embrace. Lips, oh, you the doors of breath, seal thou with a righteous kiss. A dateless bargain to engrossing death. Come, bitter conduct. Come, unsavory guide. Thou desperate pilot, now, at once, run on the dashing rocks, thy seasick, weary bark. Here's to my love. <coughs> True apothecary, thy drugs are quick. Thus with a kiss. I die. Juliet was the first of Shakespeare's great tragedies. It's also been called the loveliest. Now a word about camera three for next week. Just about a month ago, the United Nations received the special report of its committee appointed to investigate so uh, charges of Soviet intervention in Hungary. This is a human document beyond political importance. That's camera three for next week. Until then, this is Jim McAndrew. Goodbye for camera three. The actors were Briarly Lee as Juliet and Stephen Joyce as Romeo, who are appearing in the New York Summer Shakespeare Festival production produced by Joseph Papp and directed by Stuart Vaughan.
The singers, Alice Howland and John McCollum. The dancers, Nora Kay and Hugh Lang of the American Ballet Theater. Choreography by Anthony Tudor. The Camera 3 Orchestra was conducted by Emmanuel Vardy.